Hi, I'm Tim. In this video, join me as I take a Guilo's model airplane kit of the Spitfire and go from the uh, kit to this finished product. Let's get to it. In this video, we'll make the uh, Guilo Spitfire. This is the kit. We'll do the unboxing in a moment, but before we do that, I want to talk about some of my thought process for the modification of this free flight model to radio control flight. This will be my seventh Guilo's conversion, the third of the World War II series, and I've learned a lot from that that I'd like to, to discuss briefly. This is my most recent Guilo's conversion. I've taken out the um, motor and the electronics. It's the Japanese Zero. And what I found in this one is I like to keep it light because I was originally going to use the Park Zone microelectronics. Those were just not strong enough with a motor to fly this model. I had to put in a regular uh, brushless motor. The other thing I found out with the speed of this low wing World War II fighter, <clears throat> turning with a rudder just wasn't good. I really needed ailerons. But I already built the wing, so what I did was I put in strip ailerons and it flew well. And I'll put a card up for the video of this, um, of this airplane right here. Also, it was a fairly short nose moment, the distance from the leading edge of the wing to the nose, so I had to add uh, nose weight. <clears throat> uh, that'll be less of a problem with the Spitfire, but that's kind of the thought process of what's going through as we discuss the Spitfire. Let's take a look at the kit box. Uh, this is the, the um, <clears throat> Spitfire from Guilo's. The key thing is it's laser cut. The original Guilo's kits were die cut. It tended to use not great quality balsa. It was pretty heavy and dense. The laser cut balsa, the laser cutting is, is perfect, and it's, a, it's a, just a better quality of balsa. So that's a good thing that they updated here. 27 and a half inch wingspan. So as always, here's some... Um, Plastic components. This is the cowl right here. Notice it's a pretty big spinner. And at the end, or not at the end, after we do the unboxing, I have done some work. I found a one and a half inch uh, spinner that I think would be about the right size for the cowl and put that onto the motor. So we'll see how that works. Also, I note that the uh, Spitfire is a little bit narrower nose section compared to the Zero but I think it'll be okay for the motor, just something to keep in the back of my mind. Just some general balsa for the uh, sheeting. As I mentioned, the die-cut balsa, <clears throat> it, it feels light, it's, it's good quality wood, and, and really, I, I think it'll, it'll be quite suitable. One thing that happened when I was doing the uh, Zero, because I was obsessed with keeping it as lightweight as possible, <clears throat> I actually cut the number of wing ribs in half that I installed on the Spitfire, because I've got a little bit bigger engine, I'm going to put in all the wing ribs. I think it'll add a little bit of strength. I can afford just a little bit of weight on that uh, because of the, of the bigger electric motor. We'll go over the um, instructions or the plans in a minute. Little paper thing for the seat and the instrument panel, kind of silly, but here it is. <clears throat> the decal is always nice to have, so we will uh, include those. Tissue. I do not need the tissue for this model. I'll be covering it with a heat shrink covering. Uh, the standard 1 16th inch balsa stringers. Good lightweight material. I think that'll work out okay. These are just some plastic parts. The wheels prop for the uh, free flight version. Some clay for balancing. Uh, cloth for hinges. With this one, again as a prototype, I just want to see how it goes together and flies. I intend to build it with no landing gear, so the gear will be simulated up all the time, so I do not need these items for this particular build. The all-important canopy. This would be very nice for the final model. Uh, this is the really strange vinyl material that Guilas puts in. They just want to save money by not having the plywood, so they put this in here. I don't know why they do it, but I'll. this is a wing spar. I'll have to make that out of plywood. The uh, firewall, I'll, I'll make that out of 1 16th or 1 8th, 1 8th inch plywood. No need for the rubber bands. Music wire, we'll hold on to that for other projects. 
and then some plastic for the um, radiators, the uh, oil coolers, other various air scoops on the plane. So that's the kit, kit, kit itself. So looking at the plans, there's two sets of uh, paperwork. There's the plans themselves and then a list of building instructions. These are actually pretty good. I think they're worth just taking a look at because sometimes there's things you might want to uh, pick up. So it uh, starts off with the fuselage, just the standard Guilos construction. Again, I've learned from my Guilos construction to do all the work of installing the interior, the electronics, the push rods, the guides and everything <clears throat> before you put on the 1 16th, 1 16th inch balsa string. It's going to be just about impossible to do that installation after the stringers are in place. It's just the nature of a Guilos kit. The other thing it, with this kit is I'm going to make it three channels. It'll have elevators, ailerons, and throttle, so there'll be a, a solid rudder, uh, solid fin rudder assembly. So nothing really unusual about here. Uh, one thing I'm going to have to do is make a hatch on the top to get to the electronics. <clears throat> I think just looking at it, I can make the hatch from here to here should be enough to um, have access to the interior. The plan is always <clears throat> to have the right center of gravity. I'll put the equipment as far forward as I can because of the little battery. I can locate that anywhere along the way to make the center of gravity work. That's, that's what I did with the Hellcat. I think that'll, that'll be a good approach. So that's what's going on in my mind with this. The wing is a normal Guilos wing, except you'll note that the Spitfire, just the way the Brits <coughs> designed the airplane, had a very elegant elliptical wing shape. The Brits always like design, do something a little bit different, very hard to manufacture, a lot of extra work. Not really needed when you look at U.S. fighters like the Hellcat that was straight lines everywhere. So to account for that, the leading edge, it's uh, built up with balsas, not just a, a square balsa stock. So that'll be fine. Plan on using all the ribs here. <clears throat> I'll have to figure out when and where to make the cutout for the ailerons. They're not going to be strip ailerons. They'll be regular ailerons for that wing. So I'll do that as part of the wing build process, but shouldn't be any surprises on that. And again, they have uh, three views, which is kind of nice just for reference. And um, as I mentioned, the gear, there will be no gear on this one. The tail surfaces, they show built up because of my experience uh, with these models. One sixteenth inch ball, so works just fine for the tail surfaces. I'll obviously have an elevator, no rudder because of the ailerons. They discuss painting, all that's applicable for the tissue covering. Uh, other things, explode view of the model for the landing gear, um, items of that nature. One other thing I'd like to point out is the wing fairings. The wing fairings are part of the Spitfire. Because this is a prototype to see how everything goes together, I'm not going to put on these paper uh, fairings. I think that's a pretty silly way to do it in any event. If the model flies well, I intend to retrofit foam. I'll just take foam board, glue a couple layers together, sand it to shape, and that should work just fine for the wing fairings um, after we get a few flights on the model. No need to paint because we're going to use the iron on covering, and um, so it, it should be a fairly standard, fairly standard Guilos kit. Finally, we'll take a quick look at the plans. Um, the plans are always a nice aspect of the Guilos models. I, I think they did a good job with this. Again, the side view is shown here. Um, some of the Guilos models, the tail surfaces will be too small in the scale model to fly well. I thought that was going to be the case of the Spitfire, but they seem to have just the regular size on it, so we'll go with that. Um, <clears throat> notice there's plenty of uh, tail moment there. I think the hatch from about here to here should be just fine. That should not be too hard to do. Wing shown in place, the spinner. <clears throat> they have details for a gas engine back in the days of U-Control flight. Brave souls doing single channel radio control flight. I can't imagine the challenges, the challenges of doing that. It'll be much easier with a proportional system. Here they have some details with a sheet rudder, but we're going to be using ailerons for that. And finally, on the plans, just a very normal setup. Uh, this is the wing right here. No surprises from any Guilos kit you've done. About one and a half inches of dihedral, that'll be fine. Tail surfaces, the formers. <clears throat> so I don't see any real surprises. It'll just be a good Guilos kit to build, and we will go ahead and proceed with that. Details will be in the description, uh, video description, but this is what will go inside the Spitfire for the controls. I plan on using the E-Flight um, 325 um, two-cell LiPo battery. 
with the JST connectors, that'll save a little bit of weight. <clears throat> I'm going to use the uh, high-tech HS40 servos. I'm going to use three of those, one for the elevator and one for each aileron is the plan. The little receiver right here, the uh, AR410 from Spectrum, I like that with no antenna. And this is the little Altitude um, Hobbies electric motor, same one I used on the Zero. I had a one and a half inch spinner lying around and I put it together and I think this will work out well. It'll fit well with the nose section. And I mounted it temporarily on foam boards so we can just get an idea of the power because that'll be important. I think that'll be a good fit for the model. So uh, well, the spinner and all that. So that, that's all set to go. Oh, the one other thing is I'll use a uh, Y cord connector for the two aileron servos. So that's the approach. And now we will start building the wing. It's always a good idea to lay out your servos and other things on the plans to make sure you have enough line length to plug everything in. So this is about where I'm going to locate the servos. I've sketched in the expanded ailerons. You can see the double line over the plan. The aileron's a little bit bigger than the scale one. It's just for more uh, control. The wing construction continues. Uh, the outline, leading edge and trailing edge is in place. You can see the cutouts for the ailerons with the 1 16th inch plied backing for that aileron. That needs to be put into place now so you can cut the wing ribs to um, glue in place properly and uh, butt up against that to hold everything in place. And here's the wing uh, with all the ribs in place. You can see they go against the aileron um, backstops. And here's the ailerons in place. They're 1 16th inch balsa. And you just cut the ribs to fit inside there to the leading edge of the aileron so everything matches up. I've completed the wing of the Guillo Spitfire. Now here it is right here and with uh, separate airlines. So the wing goes together pretty much per the plan. <coughs> One thing I wanted to point out is all the, all the ribs. <coughs> the die cutting is very, very good, but all the notches for the 1 16th inch uh, stringers, I like to cut those out just a little bit bigger than they are laser cut on the ribs. They're just a little bit tight if you put them in. Notice that on the rib um, outlines of the plans, they have all the notches. I just make them just a little bit bigger. Note also I decided to put the ailerons here. The ailerons cutouts are a little bit bigger than the scale ailerons on the airplane, but I would rather have a little bit more ailerons for roll control than to have ailerons too small in the full scale aircraft. I think a very good way to make the ailerons is the bottom is 1 16th inch sheet. I have 1 16th inch sheet along the edge here. Another is cut to go along here. And then as you put in these ribs, you just have to cut off the end so it fits against this um, 1 16th inch balsa. This fits in like this with tape hinges. It'll go down. Notice also I had to bevel the edge along here. That's so that when you put the tape on the top, the aileron can go down like that. There is sufficient hinge room on that. So I think that'll work out okay. Another thing I want to point out is in this area here is for the vinyl included in the kit to be the spar for the landing gear. I'm not going to have landing gear on this model. So what I've done is I've put four 1 16th inch uh, stringers in here, pinned them in place and put CA glue on them. It's a very strong reinforcing wing spar that keeps everything strong together between the center section and the two outer wing panels. Another thing I wanted to point out is I'm going to be covering this in iron on covering. And the iron-on covering is so tight, when you heat it up with a heat gun, there's no way for the air to escape. It, it, ex it expands like a hot air balloon. So what I do is cover the bottom half. Then when I cover the top half, I put little notches along here so that the hot air can escape out of there. It keeps it from ballooning up. The other thing I want to point out is the servos. I've decided to use um, two aileron servos with a Y connector. And so what you want to do is plan ahead for the servo installation. What I'll do is put the servos underneath, and this is what it'll look like. I put two little 1 16th inch um, shelves here. That's so that there's room to put on the uh, iron-on covering. It can stick to something as opposed to just being um, open, because this will be an open area. You put this in place. I'll use double-sided tape to stick it to the rib 
So the servos here connect to the aileron located here. And then I've put notches on the top of the ribs to feed in the wires to the center section. So the procedure will be to cover the bottom half of the wing, install the servos, get the wire squared away, then cover the top half of the wing, and the servos will remain installed. So that's just something you want to think ahead as you um, do the construction of the wing. So the wing is in pretty good shape, a uh, little bit heavier with all the extra ribs, but I've elected to do that for strength. Um, it is a built up of three sections of the leading edge, but that stands down okay. So I think we're in good shape for the wing. The other thing I mentioned earlier is that the tail surfaces, it'll be three channels with ailerons, elevator, and throttle. So here for the tail surfaces, I made that out of 1 16th inch balsa. I'll put a reinforcement section here, 1 32nd inch balsa, and then the fin that'll go on the back. So the next step is a fuselage, and we'll put that together. Continuing with the fuselage construction, the uh, center keel is in place. Both halves of the formers are cut out, sanded, and the notch is cut a little bit deeper for the 1 16th inch stringers. I've sketched on the side view the outline for the hatch. It goes from B2 to B5. I think that'll be about right for what I have to do for this model. And here's the half of the fuselage in place. Notice that the cutout is made for the hatch. We made good progress on the fuselage of the uh, uh, Guilo's uh, Spitfire. I wanted to show you what I did to mount the engine. Notice the popsicle sticks that I stacked one on top of another, glued together, put in with a screw, uh, washers for right and down thrust. This is a commercial one and a half inch spinner, five by three prop on the Altitude Hobbies motor. And uh, this went in pretty well. I would recommend that when you use this popsicle stick, te stick technique, you put just spot glue these on the back so you can adjust it up and down. You'll, you'll have a hard time getting it right, right off the bat. This is the um, cowling from the Guilos kit. I cut it on the bottom to make it go um, on easy. And you can see that fits pretty good. And once we put in the stringers and complete the fuselage, we'll glue this in place and it should match up uh, pretty well with the spinner. Because this is such an important thing to get right, I'm gonna leave this um, intact on the model. I'm just gonna keep it on. We have the electronic speed control, uh, the receiver, and um, this is where the hatch is going to be for the Spitfire. I've always recommended in all my builds that to get all the internal components in correct, uh, the one we'll have to add to this is the uh, servo for the elevator. We'll put that in place, run the very thin control rods out to the elevator um, at the rear of the airplane. Then we can put in the 1 16th inch stringers and um, complete the model. The balance is going to be facil facilitated on this model because we have a LiPo battery right here. Because of a little bit of extra weight from the um, mounting sections here, we can locate the battery as far aft as needed to make sure the model balances out. So I'm pretty uh, happy with that so far on the model. So, so far so good. Uh, I'll wheel, I will make the nose section a little bit stronger with balsa fill after I put in the stringers just because that has to hold on the, this is just a balsa uh, firewall at this point. We'll beef that up a little bit, probably with more popsicle sticks. But that is a good way to um, mount your motor at the correct um, angle of distance out for your uh, any Guilos model airplane. This is a fuselage showing the thin music wire for the elevator. I put that in place before the stringers. Cut the holes as needed through the formers to keep from flexing the uh, music wire. It works out pretty good. You've got to do this before you put on the 1 16th inch stringers. I taped the wing onto the fuselage just to see where things balanced out. The equipment, the motor is all in place. I can see the uh, radio has to be fairly back into the cockpit to make everything work. This is the uh, fuselage so far, the Spitfire. And I put in the 1 16th inch stringers. The other thing I want to point out is here's the hatch. I've made the little hatch here. It fits on like this. We'll sand it so it goes on nice and smooth. And what I did for that was I simply took some 1 16th inch balsa, traced it on the sides here, and that should fit in pretty well um, as shown. There's, even though it's a fairly small fuselage, there should be wrong. There's a single servo here. The receiver will go up front. I realized with the motor and the popsicle sticks being just a little bit heavy for the center of gravity, I scotch taped the wing in place. The battery is going to have to go back here. So I put a little balsa 
floor there and some Velcro. The battery will go back there and that should keep the uh, Spitfire um, in balance. So, so far so good. I think the next step is to make sure that this firewall is strong in place. I'm going to take some of these uh, stringers and just glue double them up so we have twice, twice as much strength holding everything together up front. I think that should be sufficient for this aircraft. In view of the completed nose section, notice I doubled up on the 1 16th inch stringers using CA. That makes a very strong joint to hold the no, uh, nose in place. Notice also the popsicle stick reinforcements here behind the firewall, epoxy it all to the mounting to keep everything strong. These are the tail surfaces. I covered the one side with the uh, light covering. And you can see the ailerons, it's 1 16th inch balsa with the ribs uh, put in place. It's a good strong aileron, good mounting for the control horns with this methodology. Cover the underside of the wing with the um, cream colored covering. Notice the openings for the aileron servos. Aileron servos are kept in place with double-sided sticky tape. And you have to put in the ailerons before you cover the top. Make sure the wire all fits uh, in the notches to the center section of the wing before you put on the top covering. Here's a view of the fuselage that's been uh, covered. The um, horizontal stabilizer is glued in place. And you can see the engine is mounted. I just left on the uh, spinner because we'll be mounting the cowl shortly to this uh, fuselage. I finished the uh, Guillo Spitfire. Uh, this is what it looks like here. Uh, I think it came out pretty nice. It's a prototype, so I'm not <clears throat> doing a lot of the finishing details like with uh, fairings for the wings, etc. It does have a brown covering. The reason I have a brown covering because I had brown covering material. Uh, the decals look pretty good. Uh, slight. Mist of Krylon clear um, sealant holds them in place. For the nose cowl, uh, I used 5 minute epoxy, held it in place to make sure it lines up with the spinner, and then I used um, yellow mono monaco just to put that over the plastic cowling. The hatches here, I used a monaco hinge on the side. Everything fit in pretty well inside here. This is the um, spectrum receiver, the speed control, the battery fits in like this, and then the single. Uh, elevator servo. Underneath we have the aileron controls uh, servos for the two ailerons. The wings are a little bit heavy going back and forth with the um, servos in the wings. Um, it just is what it is. It's a fairly small model. Hopefully that won't affect the flight. And also note that I made the ailerons a little bit longer than the scale. The scale ones are back, back down here. I just want as much control as possible on that. It's a three-channel model, so the rudder is uh, fixed to the fin. We have elevator with tape hinges and the ailerons. To take a look at what the control surfaces look like, elevator up, down, and then the ailerons like that. I think we should have enough. And then we'll point away from us and give a shot at the motor. I think that'll be enough. Um, uh, power for the flight. So we'll find out once we get a good uh, weather day. As I mentioned, the weight, total weight with the battery is seven ounces and um, we'll see if it flies. We're here at the field. Looks like a very nice day for flying. Uh, here's the Guilo Spitfire. We'll go ahead and put in a battery and see if we can get a test flight on this thing. The Spitfire handled well. I will say it was a nimble aircraft. The initial flights I needed, this is the second flight, I needed to put some right trim and some down um, elevator, but the engine had plenty of uh, thrust and I had plenty of aileron control. It was really nice just to touch the ailerons and uh, right the wings whenever I wanted. I may uh, reduce a percentage of the aileron control for later flights, but uh, it, it flies well. Um, just good control capability. You just have to be nimble.
So I'm very happy with the test flights. We, we took it up three times. Um, the, the plane has a lot of control. Let me show you just if you do the conversion at home. Here's the elevator up, down. That is just about right. Now, if you look at the ailerons, there's a lot of aileron movement, but I liked having that much. I can easily dot let down a little bit if we want, because uh, it's pretty, not twitchy, but it's, you have to be gentle on the controls for it. But overall, I, I thought it flew well. It, it was, uh, it's got plenty of power, uh, everything held together. It, um, I think it balanced okay. I had to put a little bit of down trim and, and right trim on it, but I'm happy. It, it flew okay, it looks nice, and um, I'm, I think it's gonna be a good flyer. Thank you.